Hi, in this video, I am going to discuss one of the experiment in mass transfer laboratory drying characteristics. Drying is a process of removing water from a wet solid. The objective of this experiment is to find the drying rate of a given sample using a tray dryer. The application for this experiment is to find the time required for drying a wet material. For example, at the prevailing environmental conditions, time required for drying the shirt. If we have a wet solid, it contains water. Due to the concentration difference, the water molecules from the solid starts moving from the solid to the air around it. In this particular experiment, we are going to calculate the drying rate that is the time required for removing the water from the wet solid in this experiment. To start with this experiment, we need to know some basic definitions that involves in drying. The first terminology to be understood is humidity. It is the amount of water present in the air as vapor. The next term is saturation humidity. That is the maximum possible amount of water that can present in the air at the specific temperature conditions. The relation between the humidity and the saturation humidity is termed as relative humidity. Air cannot take all the water from the wet material. The amount of water that can move from the wet material to the air depends on temperature and the existing humidity level. The next important three definitions are equilibrium moisture, free moisture and drying rate. As we already discussed that the water cannot take all the water from the wet material. At the given atmospheric conditions like temperature and pressure, there is a level beyond which the water cannot be removed from the wet material. That minimum amount of water that will be retained in the wet material is termed as equilibrium moisture content. So when we have a wet material, the difference between the amount of water in the wet solid and the equilibrium moisture is called as free moisture. It is termed as free moisture because only that amount of water that can be removed using the air in a drying process as that limit is fixed by the equilibrium. The next terminology is drying rate. Drying rate is the ratio of amount of moisture removed and the surface area available for the contact between the wet material and the air. As a part of this objective of the experiment, when we plot a graph between drying rate and free moisture, from the nature of curve, we can identify the physical phenomena happening in the drying process. From the graph, we can classify the drying process into two stages. Constant drying rate and falling drying rate. When the drying process begins, the rate of drying increases and it becomes constant. Beyond a particular point, the drying rate starts decreasing. The range of moisture for which the drying rate is constant is termed as constant drying rate. And the region of free moisture where the drying rate falls is termed as falling drying rate. The free moisture level at which the drying rate falls down is termed as critical moisture content. To understand the drying phenomena, the wet solid can be schematically represented as the moisture content and dry solid. To get a dry solid, the moisture content have to be removed from the wet solid. When the wet solid is kept for drying at a specific temperature, the water from the wet solid moves to the air. The particular inner circle represents the equilibrium moisture content. That is, at this given drying temperature, this is the water level which cannot be removed further. Hence, this amount of moisture content is termed as equilibrium moisture content. The remaining moisture apart from the equilibrium moisture is termed as free moisture. Now, at this given temperature conditions, only this free moisture content can be removed from the wet solid material. The free moisture content can be further segregated into two regions. One is termed as superficial moisture region, another is termed as critical moisture region. During the superficial moisture region, the rate of drying will be constant. When it crosses the critical moisture content, the rate of drying starts decreasing. Hence, the particular region is termed as falling rate period. The moisture content at which the constant drying period starts decreasing is termed as critical moisture content. In a drying experiment, the objective is to determine the critical moisture content, equilibrium moisture content, time required for drying and the rate of drying. To perform this drying experiment, 25 gram of calcium carbonate will be mixed with 25 ml of water in a stainless steel plate. The diameter of the plate is 12.7 cm. Once we make a wet solid material from calcium carbonate and water, the total weight comes to be 50 gram. The drying surface area available for the air to contact the wet material can be calculated by pi d square by 4. In this case, by knowing the diameter of the plate, we can calculate the available drying surface area which comes to be 
0.013 meter square. Once we prepare this wet material, drying experiment will be carried out by keeping this plate with wet material in the hot air oven at 200 degrees Celsius. The drying process is monitored by taking the mass of the sample at an interval of 5 minutes. During the drying experiment, when we measure the mass of the wet material, we can notice that the mass of sample is decreasing. The reading has to be continuously taken until the mass of the sample is no more changing. In this experiment, we can see that the mass of the sample measured at 35th minute and 40th minute is same. Now we can calculate the moisture content. The moisture content can be calculated using the formula M minus S by S. The S stands for the mass of dry sample taken. In this case, 25 gram of calcium carbonate is the dry solid. By using this formula, the moisture content can be calculated at every time interval. For the first case, M will be equal to 50 and substrate S is 25. So we get the value of moisture content to be 1. Similarly, we can calculate the moisture content for all the time intervals. And we can see that the moisture content at 35th minute and 40th minute is same. That indicates the equilibrium moisture content. We can't furthermore remove the water content from the wet solid for the given operating conditions that will be the equilibrium moisture content. Once we calculated the moisture content, we can plot this as a graph and see the trend. We can see that with the time, the moisture content is decreasing. And also we can notice that the time required for drying is 35 to 40 minutes. Now we can move on to calculate the rate of drying. The rate of drying is given by this formula. As we already have S and A value, we have to calculate dx and dt. That is change in the moisture content with respect to time. To perform that, we are extending the table. To calculate the dx, we have to find the difference between the first value and the second value. In this case, it will be 0.78 minus 1 that comes to be minus 0.22. Similarly, we can calculate for the time difference that comes to be 5 minutes. With this dx value and dt value, we can calculate the rate of drying. Since we are finding the difference in the moisture with respect to time interval, we will not get the dx and the drying rate for the 0th minute reading. As we calculated the drying rate at 5th minute, we can calculate for remaining time intervals. Once we calculated the drying rate for all the time intervals, we can plot moisture content versus drying rate as a graph. From the graph, we can see that initially the drying rate is increasing. Then the rate is almost constant. At a particular point, it starts declining. Now the range of moisture for which the rate of drying is constant is termed to be constant drying rate. And for the range of moisture for which the rate is declining is termed as falling drying rate. By drawing a perpendicular line from the constant drying rate starting point, we can find the initial moisture content that comes to be 0.78 kg moisture per kg dry solid in this experiment. Similarly, when we draw a perpendicular line towards x-axis, from the point at which the rate starts decreasing, we can get the critical moisture content. The point at which the drying curve intersects the x-axis is the equilibrium moisture content. Thus, we conducted a drying experiment and we identified the drying characteristics including initial moisture content, critical moisture content, and equilibrium moisture and the time required for drying and finally the concentrate of drying. Thank you.